Hello, how are you? Jason Jones, how are you? I'm doing awesome. I'm glad we have a chance to do this. This is awesome. Yeah. So you, you've you been painting, you sent me a couple of images of your paintings. Yeah. I feel like you, um, did, did you say that they were unfinished? Or that like, are they finished um, pieces? The, you know the old adage, artists work never finished? Well, at some point you have to learn how to put it down. I know. <laughs> well, yes. And then uh, there, are, there are plenty that I have put down. And then I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've, you know, there's ones that I've picked up and wrecked as well. Yeah. The, the thing is, is that like a lot of artists, don't, can't figure out how to finish their work. Right. You, I get a, I've got a pretty good idea usually um, when it comes together, um, when it starts to come together. If it's not working, I have no fear in just wiping clean. Are you, uh, are you selling? At this point, no, I haven't done any active selling because I'm, I'm just assessing basically what I want to, what kind of genre I want to fall under. Uh, instead of being too early classified as far as uh, certain works or certain type of painting and then be maybe boxed into that, um, I've explored other um, avenues uh, or, or I guess uh, subject matter, I should say. Mm -hmm. You were talking to me about branding and artist branding. I think yeah. what I hear a lot is called a body of work. Yes. Um, I. Okay, so you and I agree, I think, on a few things, because I've watched some of your videos. And one of the main things I think we agree on is that, um, well, and it's the wording that maybe the disagreement would be, um, but you say, you know, it's an, a painting's worth what someone is willing to pay for it. And my disagreement there is it's actually a painting is worth what the artist is willing to let it go for. Yeah, but... Ultimately, if you don't sell your work and it's not a masterpiece, then no. then when you that's die, okay. I'm just out there. I'm just out there to to create in that sense. Yeah. Um, and so the marketing of art has changed dramatically since the um, you know the interwebs. You can say um when it used to be that a gallery could tell you how many paintings uh or how many people are going to see your paintings every week um you know i could get a million people to see my paintings overnight mm -hmm. with the interwebs so the exposure of being able and there's so many great artists out there and um i think we just talked about people connecting with artists um like having a fan base and are you using any platforms for your artwork um, there are a few platforms right now, but, um, I'm more into the, right, I'm kind of into the development stage. Yeah. I mean, is it, is this a crazy notion? Okay. I'm going to pass this by you. Is this a crazy notion as an emerging artist to amass kind of a, a collection and then sell it as a lot and let someone else do the marketing? I think that's what, um, that that's I think what you're talking about is called a body of work and a, right okay a body of work is a group of paintings that follow a consistent stream of thought and you know so one artist can have several bodies of work Andy Warhol's drawings when he was working for like a fashion magazine and then he does the screen prints and then he has like his videography his film. I'm looking at right now, just getting back. Okay, so I, I suppose I believe in just uh, being creative. I have I have the free time to be creative, and um, I'm not um, I'm not afraid to just put it out there and just say, hey, this is what I've created. There's a difference between a hobbyist and a, a professional artist, though. Yes. So at you're... at some point, yes, I would like to develop down the line of where um, I do have a, a following. Um, some people only have one or two followings, you know, two people that buy all their stuff or some, you know, collectors. Um, does that all, is that all it takes at some point? Or do you want more, more masses uh, to, to consume them? Because um, there's several different ways that, you know, I know artists that do prints. I, I, I you know, in Jackson Hole, I was exposed well, to let's, let's so many artists. About, let's not talk about other people. Let's okay. talk about Let's talk about your artwork and your 
your body of work and how you are going to go about getting collectors. Okay. Um, I am planning on doing a, a page thing and then like a web page, like just a Facebook page, nothing too fancy, right? right? Um, and using the networks that I already have, um, just getting the exposure. Because I think, um, back to what I was saying about a gallery, um, having exposure, and that is a, always a good if, uh, a way for exposure, um, and that's a good way to grow exposure. But can you, um, the web is a very useful tool to get, to get exposure. Can we agree there? Well, my experience with galleries is that it's it's hard for them to grow a fan base for your artwork if you're not already selling. Right. So so you kind of have to approach them at some point with a um, you know a resume of with an artist's resume. Um, or you have your own space. Yeah, and then you have to talk about the marketing and and how how are you drawing people in and and what makes your art valuable. Right. Well, here is one thing that I think um, perhaps may be a game changer since the COVID coronavirus, uh, people working at home. Um, I think you'll see the price of commercial real estate across the board drop. And so the ability to, for an artist to get a studio art gallery um, with space to live as well, I think is, is going to go up. Okay. And then... The how are, you, how are you bringing people to your artwork and, and finding collectors? Um, word of mouth. Um, the whole, I guess the idea is that when I started this, it started with um, the, a situation which I was just describing to you where a building was available and it was rented. And it was rented to make a studio for a tie-dye artist. And the tie-dye artists realized they had way too much space. And so they decided to invite all local artists to come in. And that is where kind of the branding idea started. Um, basically, being able to brand an artist or to, for an artist to have their own brand because they are their own brand. In other words, the artist is the brand. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And so getting, uh, by getting all, those, all, all the people in there, I um, met about 50 or 60 local artists. So that becomes a network. Um, and that's how that, those build. Uh, the shop didn't, uh, as far as the artwork didn't, it just didn't go. It was, it was a bad location. And there was a few other things. Getting rid of 50 artists, uh, having them put their work out there, forget about it, not come back, not be proactive in actually, um, you know, the, a gallery can only do so much. Art exhibitions, art fairs, calls for artists. Do you look at calls for artists? No. So when you have a piece that's done, you look for a call for artists and then you submit your images with your artist statement and your resume. Right. And you see if they'll take it and then you get into an exhibition. But I don't really like to get into group exhibitions. The artist will invite all of their friends. And so you tend to get this like very clicky groups of people. <laughs> most likely your friends aren't going to buy my artwork because it's an insult to you. So that, that, that's a tricky situation. Right. That's, and yes, uh, I, I see what you're saying. The, see, we have an art, uh, Lincoln is a college town, so there's a lot of, um, you know, downtown area has a really nice bunch of galleries. And we do gallery walks on Fridays, um, first Fridays, they call it. There's a lot of, um, I guess, communal art space, you know, like a large older building that's renovated up the top that has like seven or eight or nine studios in it. Mm -hmm. and, um, so it's concentrated. But back to the art gallery and the what you do as far as what you would expect an art gallery to do. Um, and then now with your works are all your works that you paint originals. Yeah, absolutely. So, so all the work is, is original. Well, I mean, and then I have like a product conversion line. Um, right. I'm using Redbubble. I have a line of pet portraits that I sell on Redbubble in the form of coffee mugs, you know, grocery bags, that type of stuff. I, I haven't really gotten into prints yet. Right. And that's, and see, that's the difference. You talk about artists going into several cities and things like that. 
And unless they've got this huge catalog that they can just dump, uh, most of that is, is, or a lot of it sometimes is print work with a few originals. I'll have an exhibition at the same time that I'm in a gallery and mm -hmm. then you go and you switch paintings out, you know, so you need your painting back, or you need another painting back and then... Right, this one isn't, uh, this one hasn't moved, we're going to keep it fresh, which was one of the nightmares of the 50 local artists at, a, uh, at, a, at that shop. Was, was getting artists to um, come in there and switch their artwork out or um, just in general, like acknowledge the fact that that's where their artwork was. So it's, that's what I'm saying about the self-promotion. The gallery can do so much, take a pictures, do this, have host a party, um, you know, socials and things. Whereas if the artist isn't out there actively really um, branding themselves and creating that, um, uh, the buzz, I guess you could say, uh, then it kind of falls flat. Yeah. I, so I've noted. I, I can't really tell whether or not you're serious about being an artist or whether you're more interested in being a, a broker or a, a gallerist. Um, I suppose many moons ago, um, I felt that I had the ability to um, help an artist maybe market themselves in that way. And so that was part of the direction of the local artists in the shop. And the, we did have success. Um, there wasn't, and not a, it wasn't a failure in that way. It was just uh, a lot more work than it was worth because more of the artists didn't care. But through those grades, you sort through the ones that did care and the ones that actually, that I helped actually help sell their work. But here, I'm just going to turn this camera around, Dylan, because I put up a wall of all my stuff, okay? So mm -hmm. you can kind of see what I've got going. You know, I think the faces and pictures, um, that's kind of where I'm going with the art, really. All these I, uh, are the faces of Maria, who, um, who is a former girlfriend of mine. It's basically just me experimenting. And, and one of the things I suppose um, you could be classically trained, but for me, it's uh, the discovery part of something. So right now, what I've got here, this is um, one of those paintings where I started out, I had a really nice uh, tree, and a, and a hill and everything. And, a, and then I put, was gonna put a tombstone, kind of do a kind of a darker graveyard type scene. And then of course the tombstone was just way out of proportion. So I totally gave that, that one up. Um, with this one, I was doing some color um, things. And that's, not, uh, that's unfinished now. That's probably gonna be an eyeball of, of uh, some kind of a creature. You know, a very close up. So. This one I finished, not sure I like. Can you see that one very good? Yeah. Okay, so this one I, I, I'm torn. Um, it was a bit of a texture thing where um, I tried to draw this uh, angelfish here out of the water with kind of illuminating shark in the background, but I kind of didn't want it to be, you know, not clear. But I just, this was a color palette thing where I just smeared the paint, got a color palette going, and then ended up, uh, you know, drawing out the angelfish line through that as I saw it. In, into the art and so uh, it, it's you know I guess when I go to create things it's not like I don't know what I'm gonna create mm -hmm. which to me becomes more of a uh, it becomes more of a process of um, creation I suppose um, no, because something about your artwork made me want to show you so um, so a canvas that I started here right mm -hmm. right I've got a concept, but the thing is, see all that white? Yeah. So that's still the canvas. And then, so that thing that you're doing where you're kind of like do, uh, creating the piece and then you're drawing into it, I think that what you might not want to do is be afraid to cover up portions of okay. your... Uh, you and I are both using acrylic, you know, so it works, I think, a little different than oil. If you, if you want to move. Okay, so I'm bringing this one up because this is a, kind of exactly what you were saying. And it's kind of funny because I saw that you had kind of a room in that picture that you were drawing. Yeah. This painting began as me trying to recollect and draw the inside of the log cabin saloon. And what ended up happening was 
somehow I am not a perspective guy with the, uh, you know, the vanishing points and things like that. Yeah. So this, so that painting did not work, got scraped. And you can see it's some of the remnants down here, you know, of where. I want to go back to your, I want to go back to your starfish painting though. Okay. We'll go back. So the, the thing about you drawing into the canvas, right, to create an image. Right. And you're moving around that wet paint kind of to kind of scrape it away. What I'd, what I'd say is like, don't be afraid to use the layering effect of, of acrylic. You know, right. it's a, acrylic is a buildup. Right. Well, and that's why I say I'm not sure if this one's quite done mm. be, because I do kind of want to um, work on the tentacle part and I might add a little bit. But see, yeah, I mean, that's where you say, hey, is, is there a mess? Can you see that in there? And if you can see it, do you have to squint to see it? Is that what I wanted? Right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know you're not afraid to like paint over another painting and that's fine. The the I'm not either. What what's underneath this painting behind me? Is that done? That's done. What's what's that called? This one hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> but what I did it was pull out. I pulled out the figure with the hat and the yeah. slouch, and then I pulled out the guy with the the shirt and the tie and the kind of the hat, you know, or whatever. And then this part I just left blank with the, uh, the the figure in the dress kind of a yellow dress you know a couple dresses so I don't know um, one of the things that I like to do is kind of scribble doodle this is a great example here's a great example of the scribble doodle technique and gosh I, I you know I don't know if this one's finished Dylan there's a lot of dark I can throw in behind these faces that I could finish it up. And I, who knows, I might end up with something like I just showed you before. You know, where I've just got a couple figures pulled out of that. How many pieces do you have done? Um, right now, these pe that piece is done. All of these are done. I almost, this one, um, back, I did put it in the gallery when I, uh, I just hung it up there and uh, almost had a seller on that one. This is what I think you should do. I think you should... Keep your eyes open for calls for artists. And yes. when you find them, submit the image of whatever painting you feel like applies and start to get some feedback. What people are interested in is it? The inspiration for that one came from just how to layer colors um, in a landscape. And so that's what that became, is just to how, how to kind of layer the colors or, or the, the palette that you would use. That one's, that one's probably my favorite one of all of them. Now here's something symmetrical that I was, that this is way off base. This is why like not in the catalog. Is that, is that one of yours? Yes. And that's just me experimenting with lines and color and different mediums, not just acrylic, throwing a little bit of uh, maybe marker in there. Yeah. It's born of me throwing down uh, either lines, like squiggles, and I'll throw squiggles everywhere, you know? Squiggle, 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 and then I'll see it. And I'll say, this is going to stand out, and then I accentuate that part. And that doesn't happen with every painting. Like, okay, so here's, here's one that I'm kind of working on. This was a color experiment. This is where I did a color, and then over the color, then I started to bring out the black. Or I, I put the black in and the dark in, and then I started to get the shape. And then I, I'm, I'm learning more about background, right? Yeah. So I'm learning more about like, okay, so this isn't nothing yet, but what this is, is just a uh, gessoed up with a little bit of green. And then, you know, I'll get another one. This is a different color. I'll try a painting on this color, see how that turns out. Um, maybe which way I like. Here's one. Don't know if that's finished. Can you see that? What is it? It's supposed to be a face kind of, but it's not, you know. I can see that. It's, it's not super developed, and so that's going to be one of those ones where I'm going to accentuate and bring out different colors. And I'm going to use that layering technique that you speak of. Um, I really like this one. The camera doesn't do it much justice, but I kind of like the way some of the color came out in this one. <laughs> so what's your next step in, in your career path? Creating.
And there are several opportunities for display here in town. Do you, so, how do you get into the first there's first Friday Art You know, that's you know, there's with it being a college town, we've got a concentration of uh, bars that display artwork, coffee houses that display artwork, those spaces that are above where this art walk happens, they sometimes rent out fairly cheap. Yeah. Well, my, my first show, I think, was a pizza parlor. Right. You know, I just had, I just had a wall and a pizza parlor, and <laughs> it stayed up for a couple of weeks, and then I, I took it down. Now, did you sell anything? No. The one... I, and was that discouraging? N- no, I, I mean, it's not discouraging, because, like, I'm still doing it, but... Oh, of course. One thing in I, retrospect, it's not, but at the I, time. What? I said, in retrospect, it's not, but at the time, I'm saying, was it discouraging no, for you? No, t- it was motivating because once I got some pieces up, you know, I started looking for other places to go. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I mean, the, the pizza parlor obviously liked it enough to put it up. And and, and so... Um, and did you just approach them straight up? Yeah, I just... So the one thing that I, I think that I, I would have liked to have thought when I started is that maybe pricing, you know, if you think of about it, people are sitting in a pizza parlor, they're not ready to drop several hundred dollars on a piece of artwork. They, um, might, they might drop 25, you know. Perhaps I would disagree because sometimes the guy in the overalls walks into the auto dealership to buy five trucks. Mm-hmm. You know, so as long as people have exposure to, uh, you know, all it takes is that one person to see it, to want it. That, that's an idea. One thing too is that when artwork, the, the, you kind of need to be present for it to sell. A lot of the time, the art, art, uh, art buyers want to know the artist. Right. And that's the other thing. I, you know, I met street artists that do like spray paint art um, who just pop a corner, you know, grab some concrete and uh, throw down their art. We have a farmer's market down here. And you know what? It's possible that Dylan, I could just go sit down there with my paintings um, and pop a little squat and try to sell them at the farmer's market. I think that's a start. Uh-huh. Yeah. But when it comes to pricing, do you consider, hey, well, this is a farmer's market or, you know, who's going to drop it? Or, or do you consider like, hey, I'm just going to sit out here in the sun, hang out at the farmer's market. And what do I want to let this go for? Am I willing to never see this thing again for 25 bucks? I've learned, <laughs> what I've learned recently is that you can repaint the painting once you have it in your head. Oh, you see. That's, I would encourage you to keep looking for places to exhibit and, and ways to get in front of the public. Right. Try to get some, as much feedback as you can. That is, that is what I hope. And, and, that's, um, and I really appreciate you taking the time. It means a lot to me to sit down and uh, discuss this with me. Because so, like always, you've always had such a great energy. Even, you know, you don't look like you've aged much anyway. So, uh, but <laughs> even, even when you were younger... Um, you you had this energy, and and that energy is is great. So, well, keep keep at it, and uh, let me know when you make a, a, a milestone achievement, and we'll revisit your process and your your career. Try to move into some larger canvases and see what happens. All right, Jason. Well, thank you for taking the time to to talk to me, and I can't wait yeah. to hear, hear about <laughs> your next step. Get get creative. Do do that art walk thing. Yes, definitely. And I might pop a squat down at the farmer's market one of these days. We'll see. Do both. (laughs) Well, right on, Dylan. Have a great day. Enjoy it. And then thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. Ciao. Don't forget to follow Mel Shomo on YouTube.